Hi everyone, thank you for joining today. Uh, while we wait for everyone to connect, let me tell you a bit more about today's event. So this session is part of the Global Migrant Festival. And for more information, you can visit the website globalmigrantfestival.com. The first ever Global Migrant Festival was held in Singapore in December 2018. And it seeks to provide a platform for broader and human-centric perspective and dialogue on migration. It's a cultural festival with performances, talks, and panel discussions involving artists from low-wage migrants and refugee communities. The 2020 edition features 30 online events across nine days with over 200 participants from around the world. And this session today is about Virginia Ryan's beautiful initiative, the Make Art Not Walls project in Trevi, Italy. So I'm very honored to be the moderator for this session. And before I introduce Virginia, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Marie Crescimelio, and I am the founder and CEO of Uplifters, an NGO based in Hong Kong and empowering migrant domestic workers with online education and peer support. So uh, let me introduce Virginia now. Virginia Ryan is an Australian-Italian binational artist, art therapist, and cultural activist who graduated from the Canberra School of Arts and postgraduate studies in art therapy. Since 1980, she has worked internationally within the disciplines of painting, photography, sculpture, and installation, solo, and in collaboration with artists, anthropologists, and musicians collaborating with institutions such as New York University and co-founding FCA Ghana, Foundation for Contemporary Art Ghana, which is ongoing, and Make Art Not War uh, NGO in Grand Bassam after the 2011 civil war in Ivory Coast. In 2016, Virginia founded Make Art Not War uh, in Trevi, which recently arrived refugees from West Africa. It's a therapeutic space to work with visual imagery while transitioning into the European cultures. Welcome, Virginia. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time today. And can you please explain to us what is a Make Art Not Walls project? Make Art Not Walls um, is a, it's a project that grew very organically out of a situation of actually just being aware of uh, uh, new arrivals uh, in our community in Trevi. Trevi is a, a comune, as they say in Italian, of 8,000 people. Um, and um, I noticed, I noticed some of the African guys walking along the roads and I noticed after a while that um, they were always the same people. Uh, it's worth thinking here about the fact that most people don't walk along the roads anymore. I mean, you walk along the road if you are coming from somewhere else or if you don't have a car or, so already that sort of sets you out as, as somebody who will be noticed. And um, after a couple of weeks, I went to talk to the mayor um, and the local people in the local city hall to find out who these people were and where they were staying. This coincided with my own return from having lived in um, West African Ghana and Ivory Coast for many years. So I think that within me, there was a real need to find that connection here in Italy as well. And uh, yeah, so I was told that these people had uh, recently arrived on the boats from Sicily, that the city council had decided to take in um, a number as part of an Italian um, national project. And uh, so I just asked if I, it was all very spontaneous. I asked if I could go and visit. Um, and in that first meeting, which was linguistically, this is another question that's really interesting. There was Francophone West Africans um, from different countries that perhaps their uh, national languages did not collect, connect, but the, their knowledge of French did connect them. There was uh, Nigerians, uh, Ghanaians, so English speaking people who could not speak to the uh, Francophone West Africans. There was also Italian staff in this center who could not speak French or English. Okay, so there's a whole issue around that language um, situation. I won't call it a problem, but situation as well. 
And that's a perfect space, actually, uh, to, to move in with the visual, which is, we can say, a sort of visually, visually visual culture is generally recognisable cross-culturally. Um, luckily, because of my experience in West Africa and being Australian, I do speak English. <laughs> I do speak très mal le français, but I speak. <laughs> good, <very> and, good. <laughs> I, and I speak Italian. So I was also able to move linguistically in that first meeting. And I used a key word that we can use in those three languages, courage. Courage, coraggio. The word courage comes from the Latin, the heart, cuore. And so we kind of worked around that, um, that word, which was easily translatable, and the idea of becoming warriors of courage. So, I, you know, I said, well, the one thing that we can really all agree on here is that if you've come across the Sahara, if you have been in Libya, many of them were in camps. If you have got on those dinghies at midnight, three o'clock in the morning, not knowing where you're gonna get off, often spending up to 20 hours, there's a lot of courage involved. So we started talking about that using I, when I first start these meetings, I always have a red thread. A lot of people say, I can't draw. So I say, okay, let's take this thread. Let's say I'm talking to you and you're in the same room as me, Marie. I will pass the thread to you. We'll hold it. And then you'll pass it on to somebody else. Okay. Once that conversation is finished and our first conversation was about courage everybody had been talked to in their own language and we've been translating um and then uh i said okay let's put the thread down on the floor so we put it on the floor and i said okay we've just done our first drawing our first representation this is a visual map of our conversation the flow of what's going on and that sort of released people um and then it was the people involved who, the, the, they, were, they were all men at that point, um, who said, can you come back and can we do some other work together? Um, so I did. And we did this for two years um, with a lot of volunteers and a lot of, uh, a lot of, yeah, courage, a lot of, a lot of generosity from many people, but maybe I'm going on a bit now. Maybe you want to pull me in and ask me a more specific question about it. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I'll just talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's very inspiring and uh, uh, very interesting indeed. Maybe before uh, I do ask more questions, we can screen a video about your work so that we can also see in images what you what you just told us about. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and see all this beautiful work you, you have done with the refugees. Because what, we, what we're going to try and do in our Make Art Not Walls project is let people know about you. And there's a, it's a fantastic, apart from the fact that it's fun to do, no? I think. But also it's a great way to get your message across to Italians. Even if it's in English now, don't worry, we can we'll work on that. But how does that sound?
a yeah. lot of people flew away from the country because of threats of, of lack of uh, security and never even thought of coming to Italy uh, uh, if not the situation in Libya so I was encouraged to leave that place to other whatever I might expect uh, yes. yeah. I never even thought a place like this of coming to a place like this but all of a sudden uh, it was Italy Yes. The reason why we are here is because of the fact that we believe this place will be more better for us. That was why we came here. We take the risk through the sea. Mediterranean Sea is not just an ordinary sea. It's a place where many people lost their lives. It's not everybody that left my country, Nigeria, to come down to Europe that are here today alive. But we that find our life here is the glory of God. God that brought, brings us here know that before he has set us here, maybe he knows we have a good thing to present to the country. We are not here for bad. We are here for good. We are here for favor. We are here for love. We are here for kind. We are here for sympathy. We are here for sincerity. L'arte uh, visivo è un linguaggio uh, che non ha paura delle frontiere, um, uh, arriva spesso all'intelletto e al cuore uh, del, non solo di quello che lo fa, ma anche a quello che riceve l'informazione. Penso, spero che uh, se uh, riusciamo a... Um, a sviluppare delle immagini qui in questo laboratorio il linguaggio arriverà eh, fuori dalla stanza e entra, entrerà anche nel, nell'esperienza di quelli che poi dopo lo vedranno. So, I was living fan in Nigeria, having money, until one day from a group of boys, my friends, <clears throat> so they said that I should come in secret court, group court. So I was forced to join them. So I don't know that it was a bad gang. So we used to fight people. There was no chance for me to do my work. They gave me a gun to kill somebody. So I refused to go. So they went to my house. So they, they, they found my girlfriend. So they shot my girlfriend. So she died. So I thought Libya was the best place to go, so I went to Libya. To get to Libya was not easy because of the desert. So thank God I went to Libya. So I found a friend there. But in one day I went to the supermarket to buy juice. I was caught by the police. They don't need blood, they were catching blood. So they took me to the prison, spent nine months. In. So until one day, we, the prisoners, Nigeria, Gambia, Senegal, we group up together. We bust through the wall, so everybody ran out. So the policemen saw some people, they were shooting. So God saved my life, so I decided to run. So I escaped that very day. So I looked for money again, because they, because I, I heard that people were coming from Libya to Italy. The story of Italian, they, they said it's very good. Um, the police, they, they are security here. Yeah. Before I get the money, it was not easy. There was a one Arab man, he put me inside the boat. We spent four hours in the sea before we see Italian rescue at the ship, big ship. They rescue us, everybody was saved. So they take us down to Sicily, <coughs> Messina. E 
essere nel mondo in una, in una maniera molto più particolare, un po' come dice Alex, di dare valore al mondo simbolico, al mondo creativo, al mondo dei sogni, al mondo dell'immaginario in fondo, uh, è un sostegno importantissimo, direi anche cruciale, nel sviluppare un proprio senso di sé che può andare poi fuori nel mondo, in questo nuovo mondo, un mondo anche dove ci sono tanti pregiudizi, e, e confrontarla con un'autenticità molto autorevole, consapevole. Um, ci, ci deve essere una generosità da ambedue le parti, no? E credo che noi abbiamo lavorato molto su questo. Um, e poi le immagini viaggi viaggiando fuori nel mondo, eh, queste piccole opere riescono, riescono a toccare le persone nella loro comune umanità. No, 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 me, me this, this man, we meet up to get out of California, okay. Africa, me, I know this man. No, no, no. no. What what make I come from Italy? Yes. Yeah, Africa, my country, too much problem. Uh, pol political business. My father died uh, in a uh, uh, studio. Studio. Start. Ah, okay. Start. Yeah. Uh, start the uh, 22 September 2000, uh, 2009. 2009. Uh, I come from. Uh, uh, Sierra Leone, Freetown. Mm -hmm. After I come, I come Africa, uh, uh, Guinea. I will call my friend. Mm -hmm. My friend say he did uh, uh, Mali. Let me go work together. Because of freedom, the time when we come of freedom, uh, that time I go to my brother. Mm -hmm. My brother is he died in freedom. In back he died, he sick mal malaria. Libya now I go I get work, have work in Libya. But uh, I work I work like a uh, six months. Six months. Now I finish for work. You can't stop me, you make a can do I I can't up the car go to me prison. For six months. Yeah, for six months. Now one day all people all people make a uh, uh, make well this the gate mm -hmm. all people because no no eat no eat no no nothing no no clothes cold the clue some people they die inside nothing yeah one day all man pull the gate some people run away some people then kill some people This uh, in French, valish. Uh, I make uh, I'm making for designer. Mm, I want to put uh, my 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 work. I want to put uh, more more work, more work more inside. Work. Yeah, like a like a draw. You see what I mean? The draw. Yeah. Or, or like something. If I make something, put it inside. Put it uh, Obama on the front. Yeah. Uh, I, I like it, it's there inside my heart. I like it. Obama. Okay, this this uh, uh, Italia, Italia Carta. Okay, this Italia Carta. See? Uh, more more things there inside. I like it more thing. Like uh, Italia Donna. Like Italia Donna and, uh, and, and this. And this and this bag, this bag I like it. I draw this inside. This I draw this inside. There inside.
Si sono aprendo l'arte, sì, come Alex, una delle persone, mi ha detto poco tempo fa, adesso io comincio a pensare come un artista. E io ho detto, Alex, che significa? E lui ha detto, non lo so, ma è tutto diverso, tutto diverso. Ecco, quindi penso che pensare come un artista forse significa che andare oltre certe boundaries, come si dice, frontiere anche interne che noi costruiamo intorno a noi stessi, a nostre idee di chi siamo. You have passed through a lot of situations. I believe there's a ways, there are many ways to um, amend your life. Be focused, you know, be de determined to do better things, avoid crime. Uh, you know, that's the most important one. No, no, avoid thing. crime. Just avoid crime. Yeah. You might not be living in the, uh, the, uh, the standard life you wanted, but it's just a matter of time. Uh, just a matter of time. Everything will be okay. Yo, we are here, you know, like I had never talked about maybe drawing, painting and all this stuff. Maybe sometime I consider it to be my professional. Oh, wow, yours is. They have it's better a, living for me. It's, it's a change already. It's, it's a change already. That is the major reason we oh. see the, 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 the Italians give you a, a lot of meaning where your life become meaningless yeah. they give you meaning they, 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 you have time to do this you have time to do this you can do this you can, you can do, do this. this they make mm -hmm. you understand that you can do this and yeah. when you start starting with something you can end up no. big then, uh, yes no. they encourage, encourage yeah some they encourage, encourage you of starting up something and, and it is true i've seen it through mm. this very particular uh, act work that we are doing yeah. Go Loro, please. We started this with a, a, a carbon yeah. paper. Yeah. Started with a carbon paper. From there, gradually. Not mm. take other yeah. dimension. Going from our place to our place. Yeah. Ah, we are going this place, we are going this place. Seeing people, knowing people. It's a good thing. So much, I so much appreciate uh, Italians for that. They made me feel well, I don't. Yeah. They made me feel I'm not I'm not hopeless. There's a, I have a dream. Yeah. Well, amazing. There are many things in this Italy that you can as in you can involve yourself on and I will benefit to. So many. At least I've start I've started I've started it now. It might be this artwork. So maybe as I'm still going, other ideas may still come. So I will yeah. still pick it up, still learn something from there. So I just believe everything, anything I see people doing, I want to be involved in. I want to learn more. I want to learn more and more and more. Yeah, art, that is uh, it. Yes, art is not just work you do for money thing. It's idea. It's just idea. If you have it, you have it. let me just do this. Let something come. You bring it out. You bring it out. When you bring it out. When there's any feeling, you bring it out. Amandu. My king. Sclavon. Africa. Deception. This art on him, Africa lady. It's my best work, Italia. Uh, the 
essere anche molto umile di sapere che eh, bisogna esplorare, fare, 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 fare e spesso fallire. Uh, credo che qui hanno capito che il fallire mh, fa parte del processo, il fallire significa avere sì, un gran coraggio e di alzarsi e provare di nuovo. Questo sicuramente è una lezione importantissima per persone che, eh, che hanno dovuto già eh, provare tanto e dovranno fare anche moltissimo eh, nel futuro se vogliono essere inseriti um, in, in Europa. Io devo ringraziare Virginia per tutto quello che ha fatto perché ha dato una risposta concreta a una realtà che era costituita da questi dei nostri ospiti, sono circa 40, eh, che ha dato una risposta di carattere culturale che è assolutamente positiva, cioè queste persone hanno ha avuto la possibilità di conoscere la nostra realtà e di loro di far conoscere la loro realtà, per cui è uno scambio culturale. I want to thank the unity. I pray that from now on that the love and unity that which people have shown us that we will remain loyal, we will be respectful and we will humble ourselves to the Italian people and your wishes will be our command. So I pray that God should give us long life and prosperity for we to earn our living tomorrow. I pray for the Bobino coming up that we have a good, a good understanding to share with them that Africans, we are one, black, white, we are the same. We, know we are good people, we don't have a problem. We have reason of coming here because even right from time, it's not a matter of coming to Europe or something, but right from time, our dream is to live with the white people because we so much believe in them. Ali Blue Eyes, one of many sons of the sons, will make his way from Algeria on ship with slaves and with ox. With him, thousands of men with the body and eyes of the lower dog of the father on board launch in the kingdom of Farmer. With them, they will bring the children and bread and cheese wrapped in yellow Easter Monday sheets. They will bring with them grandmas and donkey on tarmac. Stolen from colonial ports, they will land on Cotronio or Pami in million dress in Asia rag and America shirts. The people in Calabria will say, scornless to those scornless. Here are the elderly brother with their children and bread and cheese from Cotronio or Pami. They will travel up to Naples and from there to Barcelona, to Thessaloniki and to Marseille in the city of the underworld, sogs and serfs, mines and lies, with the jam of ancient history. Quindi augurerei a tutti noi um, persistenza, Uh, sì, lo uso di nuovo questa parola, comunque è la parola fondamentale in tutto questo, coraggio, uh, tenacia, tanta tanta tenacia e um, tanta esplorazione, di esplorare, di esplorare perché tanto uh, si può esplorare in una pianeta intera oppure si, è, si può anche esplorare, esplorare uh, su una pagina A4 è sempre un grandissimo viaggio
it's, it was very inspiring to see how make art not walls help refugees shape their personal narratives, overcome trauma, and actually use their past experiences to create new purposes from them. And I, I do have quite a lot of questions for you, Virginia. And, and first, I'm, I'm very curious, how has the project evolved over time, and especially most recently uh, with COVID-19? Okay, Marie, um, this project had um, actually um, altered very much before COVID because um, about 18 months ago, I'm not quite sure now, I'm just trying to think back, this year has become very fuzzy, but well before these particular migrants who were working in that space that you saw in the film, actually we got a better space after the film, mm. um, were within a number of hours moved from the Comune of Trevi, all of them. This was um, something that was uh, extremely shocking, as you can imagine, uh, unexpected. Although we had always had a sort of contingency emergency plan of what I call, used to call the what if plan. What if you are told next week or next month that you'll be moving on. Because as we know, often these um, situations are quite unstable. Uh, so part of that uh, was if, I mean, it never occurred to me that people would be moved on in three hours. I, you know, I actually thought maybe a month or something like that. So we'd already agreed that in that case, I would become guardian of all the work and that a long-term project, a museum, uh, a room in a museum would be created here in Trevi and that will happen. I have the word of the mayor, it still hasn't happened. Um, so that people can come and see what uh, the migrants um, created in those two years and also reflect on it and that there will be possibilities to draw and keep commenting on that so it becomes a dynamic project. I'm hoping some of these people will come back as well. But to get back to your actual question, um, we did, we kept, we've we kept a lot of connections going um, through uh, our beloved cell phones. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, you know, over time, uh, the people, mainly men, as I said before, although there were, as you saw in the film, at a certain point there were a few women who came into the project, but then they were moved on to other uh, towns and other centres. Um, and I'm sorry to use the term move on. I know it sounds a little bit lazy, but that's a kind of a, that's how I feel about it. I do feel they were moved on. Um, yeah. Um, they, most of them, apart from perhaps two, had no long-term interest in continuing to work with images. Mm. This was, this was, they want jobs. Yeah. They want families, they want jobs, they want to be part of the society. So my project would have kept going had more people moved in. Mm. I mean, for example, after you saw on the film, uh, there were a number of new people. And I remember one day, and it had, we'd created our own sort of culture. Um, we had a better studio space. It was self-run. I never had the keys, um, nor did any of the other volunteers. It was run by the people there. And I remember this guy coming in who had got off the boat in Sicily like three, day, three days before. He'd been in a camp for... I don't know, nine months, I think. And suddenly he's in this room where people are drawing and playing music and there's a lot of colour. And he just sat there and he said, I didn't know the world could be like this. Wow. So I, I realised when he said that, I thought, wow, you know, to be in a situation like that for so long and then to come back into a world where people say hello what's your name here we're doing this if you feel like joining in please do we'd love you to but you can just sit there if you feel like it or whatever just talk or not talk or <laughs> um must have been an amazing validation of his dignity as a human being um i think also 
that we did create, it was a little bit, I mean, I don't want to sound too emotional about this, but, you know, why not? Why not be emotional about it? Um, the day that everything finished, the day that in three hours we had to dismantle the room, I had to get all the work out. I called a lot of friends who came down. Um, people uh, were being, well, our friends, our African friends were part of it, were being put on um, buses. Actually, I'm going to call them the participants from now on. The participants were put on buses and moved and they didn't know where they were going. They just knew that if my name started with A, Abdul, I'd probably be going to that city or this place over here, all within Umbria, however, within our, our region. But as we drove away that day, and other people said this to me too, and some of the guys on the buses said this to me too, as we drove away, each in our own directions, we definitely had this sense it was a bit like, and I am saying this emotionally, um, it was a bit like the end of a love affair. You know, when you suddenly, I mean, I'm here and this is my reality and poof, it changes. And you suddenly think, wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that amazing what we did together? Mm -hmm. So I think we, what we created, and it couldn't last because these things don't last, what we created was a space journeys right it was such an important crucial part of almost being born again after such a traumatic experience you... it's like a landing you it's like we created this sort of utopian island and said whilst you have to be here whilst you can't work whilst you're waiting for your permits whilst you're learning italian um let's do this let's create this little space or not actually it wasn't even that little and let's make this into a kind of i mean now i never used this word then and i don't want to romanticize it too much but you know when i look back at all the images there is a kind of sense of a utopian space that was created um that's the magic of art that's the magic of images that come out and declare themselves a journey of a thousand steps begins with a single step Okay, so you know, I mean, I I don't know now with COVID. I, some of the guys are um, up in a place called Col Fiorito, but I can't go there. Mm. Um, so, and you know, they're in a they're in another suspended space now. But I think at this point, that suspended space needs to be filled up with learning, mm. you know, computer skills or mm. learning a trade. I think that it, that our project was necessarily not, not long, you know, two years was, and I'd happily do it again, but with different people. It's, mm. It was definitely about transitioning. Mm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense uh, that you gave them this bubble and this safe space to uh, express all these difficult uh, things they went through and then they can move on with their life and just, I mean, very rightly pointed out, they very uh, much need probably other kind of uh, training skills and opportunities, but exactly what you provided to them is maybe not exactly what they need right now. So. Exactly. And that's exactly. totally fine and, and yeah but I, I do believe that the impact you had on them i mean for sure will last over time but also on the community so you just mentioned the museum and so all this art well, that was created is still there and uh, it's absolutely also something that can impact uh, the community uh, i guess yeah um so marie i think that you that's actually really important what you just said because the way, I mean, my approach is also always very holistic. So what is community? So the community of the new arrivals was in a dynamic relationship with the local people. Now, for example, I'll give you, um, yeah, I'll give you some examples of the kind of sensitivity that we tried to work on. Um, most of the, we, this was a volunteer project and um, most of the material, actually, 
all the material <laughs> was donated. Okay. Now, a lot of it was recycled. I'm a great believer in recycling, taking what is unloved and making it loved again. So that's also a metaphor yeah. for self-love in a situation where you feel you are the abandoned one. Mm. Uh, so the material became a metaphor for that, but also material says, I don't have anything better than any of the local citizens who don't know, maybe, because they've lost jobs in the last few years or they're on a very tight budget, they don't know how to pay for good materials for their children when their children do projects at school. Mm. Okay? It's really, really, really important to me that there is a total respect and understanding also for the difficulty for local people, because otherwise there's not going to be any communication. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of drilled this in because I lived a lot in Ghana. I also drilled, I mean, I used the fact, you know, cause there's also the kind of dynamic of gender also like I'm a woman, I'm older as for some of the other volunteers, you know, the, the army of older women who give time all over the world is absolutely extraordinary. But I had to sort of pull out this kind of, I don't know, authoritarian auntie at times <laughs> to sort of say, okay, this is what's going to happen. We're going to stop talking now. We're going to do this. Yeah. And I had to sort of, and having lived a lot in Ghana, I'd learned a lot from some of the older women how to do that. But, uh, yeah, there was a whole lot of stuff also about respecting women mm. in a way that is very important to me. There was questions around language. For example, there's formal and informal Italian. So if I'm a new arrival, I try and use a little bit more formal Italian um, in order to show respect for the other, but also to show respect for myself. Mm. Right. So all kind of like there was such an overlap between visual culture and luckily the, the Italian teacher became a good friend of mine and the other volunteers. Um, so we, we managed to kind of work on this together, but that, you know, nothing is separate from anything else. So when we talk about community, um, well, for example, if we talk about migrant community, I'm a migrant here. I mean, I have my Italian citizenship, but you know, uh, I completely refute the term expat. I'm a migrant. <laughs> fair, you know, I mean, what yeah. is the difference between an expat and a migrant? Yeah, it's basically, usually it's about privilege and color, right? So just being aware of all these things. And also we did what I call at the beginning an honesty pact. Like we're going to look after each other's feelings, but we're not going to pretend here. We're not going to pretend that everything's all right and we're all little delicate flowers and we can't deal with stuff. Mm -hmm. You guys have come across the Mediterranean on dinghies. You can deal with this. Right? Um, but I, I think the people here in the local community, obviously there was a lot of feeling, um, polarised feeling, but I think over time, because of the approach we took and the way that we were able to use the local museum and we had a lot of support from the city council. I think that the general dynamic was pretty reasonable, actually. Okay. You know, it's not perfect. Um, and it, it's impossible that it will be perfect in this economic climate or pro probably ever, unfortunately. But the role of artists and therapists in this is really fundamental in creating, as you said, a safe space, but a safe space for everybody. Mm. Well, and to make everyone uh, uh, share this, you, our human feelings, and in a sense, you, you can understand better the other one because you can see its feelings through its art. So it really brings people together uh, yeah. and it helps reduce the polarization. So. Of course, this cannot be perfect, but maybe without this kind of project, that would be very difficult and just to be fine or average is already a major accomplishment to be very proud of. Yeah, I think, you, I think that's true. I also think that one has to kind of 
we have to be dreamers in a way. And part of my dream is that, you know, and I, I used to say this to the guys, like maybe in 20 years, you're going to come back to Trevi and you're going to see this room in the museum and you're going to say to your friends or your family or maybe your children, hey, look at those. I did those. I did those with these really kind of strange people <laughs> who worked with us when we first came to Italy and I can't believe, you know, but I know that, that, that part of, you know, uh, bearing witness, bearing witness to your own life voyage is incredibly important, like you said before, in order to kind of create, you know, the backbone that makes us who we are as we grow through life. Um, and I think for those particular people to know that we were saying, wow, what a voyage. This is like, you know, the Bible. And a lot of them are very Christian, so they really re respond to this. Well, Muslims as well. There's quite a lot of Muslims. But they, this kind of, we tried to, to work, I think, on the kind of heroic aspect of it. Yeah. Because that's the aspect that's often forgotten. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I know. The, the fact that this is heroic and it's also portraying their dreams and it makes what makes us humans as well, that we have dreams bigger than ourselves. And it, I, I could see that in, in, the, in the video as well, that uh, you can see from where they come from and all the dreams they had and the reason why they are now here. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, um, it's for me what you are doing seems very much relevant anywhere in the world because it is just the essence of what makes us human. Um, but of course, very curious about your, your view and what would you advise to anyone who would be willing to start such a project? Start. <laughs> you know, like you don't know before. Mm. And it's, I, I think these projects are always sort of extended brain theory, you know, like, I mean, like this conversation is, we didn't know before the conversation, really, we, we trust, we trust that there will be a conversation. Um, but we didn't know what we we're going to say. It's, it's like, you know, jumping into the void a little bit, for example, Okay, so here, this is yellow, so it's not a good example, but, you know, oops, that's got a scribble on it. <laughs> but a blank page, start with a blank page. It's extraordinary how terrifying that blank page can be for somebody who's not used to mark making. Yeah. But I used to say, blank page, if you've got this far, you can do that. Yeah. And I think it's really important if anybody starts to be completely non-judgmental about the images to allow, as we should be about each other when we first meet each other, allow the images to manifest. It might just be a line. I remember the first day, Patrick, this very lovely man said, I can't draw. And I said, well, you know, um, that's okay. Maybe you can do a little stick or just, you know. Anyway, he drew this tiny little foot. And the little foot, and he wrote next to it, you cannot, I'm going to paraphrase here, you cannot understand the shame of being barefoot and not being able to sit at the table with others. Mm. When I had shoes again, then I could sit down and talk. So, you know, that's open to a lot of interpretations, but the courage, I'll never forget that because the courage of him, this tiny tentative little foot, but then writing those words and being prepared to share them with everybody, people he didn't know, mm. um, and declare himself is incredibly brave. So, you know, we need, we need, well, I'm going to say visual cultures, but we need all manifestations of creativity, music, words, 
iPhones, you know, the camera, um, drawing, to kind of emanate, to, 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 to come out into the world, to show us, you know, other aspects of who we are and how we are. And also to leave this, I think it's really important that people realise that they're, what they leave, their documentation, of that moment, that historic moment. I mean, we're going through, you know, as you know better than me, enormous, you know, seismic shifts in world populations and the reasons people are travelling. We need, we need also to have this documented mm. by the people themselves. Yeah. Um, and actually, like related to to this uh, and helping people document their own journeys. So we we have many uh, migrants uh, listening to us today. Is there something you could uh, some suggest to them to do to exploring their own personal journeys through art? I think there's only one word there. Well, first of all, there's no right or wrong. Okay, really important because we all have the inner judge. We've learned all our lives to judge others and judge ourselves. So, you know, art is a space where you can actually let go of that. But also it's be yourself. Be authentic. You know, that is our beauty, that we are unique. And leave whatever testimony and witnessing that you can because it will be not only important for you in your life but for the future for other people you know to know that also that they're not alone that this is part of the human experience mm -hmm. and should be celebrated for the yeah for, for you know I'm very much I'm definitely on the side of the bravery and courage that's involved in this and that's kind of, I don't know how you feel about this, Marie, but that's often kind of like pushed down, you know? People are made to feel ashamed. Yeah, well, I think it's strong emotions are um, very often buried. And indeed, when you have difficulties in life, you are very often uh, brought to felt ashamed about them, while uh, very often you, you are um, I mean, you're a victim, not in a pity sense, but just very unfortunately, you had to face a lot of hardships. And um, for sure, um, I think expressing your hardships through art is also a way to help everyone around you to, to see that this is, this is not something to be ashamed of. This is something to be proud of. This is part of your humanity. And uh, this is also uh, something that you can, uh, proving your resilience, I've always been uh, very, very uh, inspired and uh, humbled by the resilience of the migrant domestic workers we are uh, supporting in our community. When yeah. you look at everything they went through, through, through life and they're still here with a, a big sm uh, uh, smile on their faces. And it's actually, we, and be, before you know the hardships, you have no idea. And once you know the hardships, it's actually, it's a real motivation for you as well, you know? I mean, if they did that, if they went through all of that and they can still smile today, well, that tells me a lot about how strong uh, we can be uh, together. Absolutely. And also, I think one of the, you know, also, for example, visual culture, um, I'm only talking about visual, but this will extend to other um, creative forms. But for example, when I said before about the Bible, and then I said there was also a lot of Muslim people, for example, during Ramadan, part of our project, the sound part of it was also not only people's voices, but a lot of music. People would bring their, their music on their phones. And so a couple of people asked during Ramadan, um, can we just listen to the Quran? Mm. Because we can't listen to other musics. And everybody said, uh, okay. And that was actually really extraordinary because I remember that month as being really relaxed. <laughs> uh, just this, this I, I couldn't understand Arabic, but I mean, a little bit from living in Egypt years ago, but, you know, just this kind of beautiful, beautiful sound that was happening behind us created a very special space for everybody in that month and no doubt affected the work, but also um, potential 
conflicts. I'm not saying there were in this situation, but potential conflicts uh, in a group can be acted out on the page mm. and talked about rather than, yeah. you know, necessarily having to manifest in this mm. other reality. <laughs> and um, so even though, you know, my experience of, of West Africa taught me that, um, for example, Muslim um, uh, culture and Christian cultures cohabit usually very well. Um, it was lovely to see that reproduced here in Italy and, mm -hmm. and to, to see also work that pe where people felt very free to express their own beliefs on their own work and that it would be accepted by, by the group that wouldn't create conflict. So, you know, we could talk for hours about how much power is embodied on a surface like this. Yeah, it's a wonderful medium. For yeah. Um, so, yeah, so obviously, like I'm, I'm listening to myself now and I'm saying, Virginia, you are a true believer. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like I am. I totally, totally find um, that being able to manifest some kind of between art and therapy with basic, very basic materials is one of the most alive moments that one can have in life, anybody. And it's, you know, it, that's for great artists and great in terms of in the, in the neon sign and children and everybody who finds the power to, to make a mark and like, it's not going away. That's not going away. That's there now. Wow, very powerful. Let's just grab a piece of paper and, and, and start doing it. And then you kind of like, I don't know if this will come up as mirror writing there. I yeah. am. Yeah. Well, I, this is so powerful that uh, I'm not too sure how to it would be perfect words to finish our interview. And I know that uh, we have already uh, discussed quite a lot together, um, but I still had one very personal question uh, to end. And well, you know, this is a very um, beautiful journey you went through. And I guess that yourself, you are also uh, personally impacted and it also, uh, you have also learned a lot. Uh, so I guess you're also using art for yourself, but can you please Tell us a bit more about how it impacted you personally in your own human being journey. Um, as I said before, I'd been living in Africa, so I needed, I needed to feel that warmth, that the music, the voices around me. I need to be in a cosmopolitan society, so that. It impacted me here in that I felt like this part of Italy became for me a little bit more global. Okay. What it does to me when I see that authenticity come out in other people, it, it reaffirms because we constantly need to be reaffirmed. You know, we're, well, I get despondent and depressed and feel like, what am I doing? And I don't know, like, I think we all get like that, don't we? more or less, you know, I, I have a lot of doubts, but every time that happens, it's like, this is why, this is why. So I have to do that with my own art as well. It's a pleasure on one level. It's a struggle. I've been, you know, being an artist for four decades, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. um, but it reaffirmed my belief that one of the most important and not acknowledged ways to create connections for people who are arriving, people who've departed, people who are living different generations is the creative process. Mm -hmm. This, as you said, this is what makes us human. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
I mean, if I, you know, there's one other thing that I think I almost think is the same, and probably you'll have some people talking about that, which is, you know, like growing plants. Mm. I also think that, you know, creating roots like that is also incredibly powerful. But I, it's a kind of, I don't know if I sound very conservative, like this is a kind of back to basics approach. I'm, I just think in terms of the transition, when you have very little, you can probably get some paper and a pen, mm. you know, and maybe a group of people because there's something lovely that happens in a group. Mm. You know, you kind of, even if it's wordless, you're, you're doing this together. And I felt, for example, with some of the guys, like their really romantic soft side kept coming out. You know, these dreams of bubble baths and, you know, champagne in the bath with your beloved girlfriend and things like this, which was really interesting to see. And, and that's also a really important part of dreaming about your life. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I and also I, I guess it, it taught me about different people's perspective because here am I, you know, when when uh, the last day, one of the guys, I said to him, oh, my goodness, I'm so worried. I hope you're going to be OK. And he said, he said, don't worry about me. He said, I'm worried about you. And I said, oh, OK. And he said, you're getting old. You've got to be careful. That's sweet. <laughs> so I didn't really like that very much, but, you know, I mean, it's all perspective, isn't it? But, you know, that, I, but then I thought about that after and I thought, wow, those people came into those space needing protection. And as you beautifully said, and I'm going to say this again, the safe space. And then at the end they leave worried about me because I'm growing old, <laughs> right? I mean, you did the job. Well, that's well done. Yeah. We, do, we do what we do. And I mean, it was all, you know, there was a lot of other people involved. I'm, I keep saying I, but I'm, the mm. I is we, you know. It's, um, and also, I think in any of these processes, you know, there's a lot of days you think, well, I thought, like, why am I doing this? Like, Today, nobody's here and I was supposed to have this meeting and it's not happening. And, and then they're kind of internal dialogues like, <laughs> and you just have to get over that. Yeah. So every time I think, well, I think this in general about when we're with other people or even the other people in our own heads who keep talking, the internal dialogue, it's constant action reaction, hope, disappointment, apathy, energy, they're all going to happen. Yeah. You know, anger, forgiveness, love, it's all there. Yeah. yeah. You feel like this too? Well, yeah, I, I, I feel that... Uh... The, the emotions are what connect us with the other human beings. It's one of the most powerful way because we, we can immediately feel that, okay, this is another human being in front of me. And I like really- The thing about the emotion, the word emotion comes from movement, right? So the movement of the migrant movement and the emotion that we feel, hmm is it's that it's that life flow isn't it yeah and it's going both ways so they are releasing their emotions and in a sense it's going towards you and then your own emotions are going towards them and in the end what is nice is that this is very balanced and there is no uh it's not a top-down approach it's really about sharing and about going through something together and i like the idea of okay of course this is powerful just to do it by yourself with a piece of paper but it is even more powerful to do it with a group of people and to co-create together and to be witnesses of each other's journey um, yeah you know um in child psychology for example um children who go through um difficult childhoods or, 
you know, we'll use the term abuse. Mm -hmm. Often it's said that if they have one person who says, I believe your story, mm -hmm. I believe it, then the chance of healing becomes much greater. Mm -hmm. So I think that also that can be applied to any situation of oppression. Yeah, to be acknowledged. And we're going back to the I am. It was very powerful, your I am. And in the end, this, this is a very strong need as a human being to be recognized as, as just a human being. But yeah. this I am. Yes, you are. You matter. Yeah. And yeah. really something that uh, struck a chord with me is that very often refugees and migrant worker people we deny them this I am, we deny them this, this dignity, this, this human being uh, identity. Um, and to just give, that, give them back their sense of identity, you do much more than what you can realize. That's right. And I think, Marie, that, that if we can't recognize the I, if I can't recognize the I am in you, okay, there's a shadow in me, there's part of me mm. that I can't look at. Yeah. It all comes back to how do we, who are not in the situation, you know, it's how, well, where does I end and where do you start? See, that's a whole other thing. But, you know, I know I am in a privileged position mm. in this world in this moment. Okay, I don't know what the future will be, you know, but I know that. But I also know that in order for us all to live in a better world, and also I think to respect the planet itself, we have to acknowledge the shadow parts. And whatever it is that I'm afraid of, that's what I have to look at. So. You know, part of this, for example, in Italy, there's a lot of, you know, anti-immigrant feeling that's mm. pumped up by some some politicians. And it's, I look at them, I look at them talking and think, this is all you, inside you. Mm. Yeah. It's transparent, but, you know, self-knowledge, self-knowledge, we need, there's, it's a long road. We're all on it. Yeah, but yeah, well, with beautiful initiatives like you, little by little, you know, it's, all, it's also about building more inclusive societies. So it's, it's a very beautiful example to, to follow. And uh, well, I think this is the end of our time together. But thank you again so much for being with us today, Virginia. It was uh, a real inspiration to talk with you. And I, I'm going to grab a piece of paper now and... <laughs> for sure and i'm sure many of our viewers will start doing the same okay thank you thank you thank you